Hello folks, well there you go, it's been the first 50 days of the Corona Wildlife Diary. I couldn't let this momentous occasion go past without some sort of celebration, so uh, I put together this homemade presentation for you. Looking back over the last 49 days, the last 7 weeks of wildlife highlights uh, from the back garden. So if you grab a drink and join me, we'll do a quick recap of some of the amazing things I've seen in the last 50 days, or the first 50 days, depending on how you look at it. Okay, well, uh, we started back on the 18th of March, which seems like a lifetime ago now. And around about then, the first butterflies were coming out of hibernation. These butterflies would have been hiding all through the winter in garages and sheds, under the ivy, under the trees. And the first bit of warmth and sunshine, they start to emerge. And we saw the first peacocks on March the 18th, and we saw commas. And later on, we saw the beautiful brimstones emerging as well. And then on day two, well, by day two, I'd already had enough and I shaved all my hair off. But I very kindly uh, donated my hair to the local long-tailed tit population in the hope that they'd take it and use it to uh, feather their nests, as it, as it were. The hazel catkins were coming out. And on day five, I took you for a virtual tour around the garden. And you met some of the uh, statues which were left here by the previous owners. And this little piggy here, he was due for the chop, but uh, due to some very uh, persuasive emails from people, I've decided to keep him. And in March, we were saying goodbye to the last of the winter visitors. Uh, these thrushes, like the Red Wing and the Field Fair, were heading north. And we stood out under the stars and heard the last calls of the Red Wing as they winged their way up to Scandinavia. I did a bit of uh, photography uh, in March. I, uh, I camouflaged myself on the sofa. You can just about make me out there. If you look just between the pillows and the Elvis Presley chair, you can see me uh, hiding away on the sofa, taking some amazing wildlife photos, some great bird photos, including this, uh, this jay and this uh, lovely chiff chaff. And on day 12, uh, my wife and I had to evict the giant Tegenaria house spider that lives in the greenhouse. I, I say my, my wife and I, it was mainly my wife. Uh, but uh, Claire took her down a few doors uh, to a neighbour's garage and let her go there. But we do have some actual footage of us uh, encountering the spider. By the end of March, March the 30th, uh, the blackthorn in the hedge in the garden uh, was in bloom. And the black cap, back from its winter down south, was singing its little heart out in the sallow. Now one of my highlights from the past seven weeks has been finding this poo. This is a green woodpecker poo, which I found on the front lawn. Now I love green woodpecker poo because you can take it apart and dissect it. And you can find all the little ant bodies that are inside. The ants, the green woodpecker, have been lapping up with his tongue. There they are, they are lovely. Look at that. And one evening, we put out a trail camera and got some lovely film of this beautiful vixen, a female fox who came into the garden and ate all the dog food. And I was delighted to find that the vixen and her cubs were living a few feet away from my fridge, over the wall and under the neighbour's shed. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Here he comes! Yay! Now my wife Claire did a guest blog one day talking about all the wonderful fungi you can find in the back garden. I've seen quite a few of these blue butterflies around in the last few weeks. These are holly blues. They're having a good year it seems. And we cleared away the pond, around the side of the pond, let more sunshine in. And one of the first things we saw in there was this beautiful grass snake. Absolutely amazing to think I've got a grass snake living in my pond. 
and this giant frog too. And I lay down one day and watched these beautiful large red damselflies as they were mating and then laying eggs. You can watch here and see the male damselfly dragging the female around as she lays her eggs on the leaves while he flies above her and keeps guard. I also found this dotted bee fly in the back garden. And I made these bee hotels in order to attract some solitary bees to nest. And I had to wait a while, but spring officially started when the first orange tip flew through the garden. And I went uh, around the corner and bought some horse manure and had an argument and then brought it back and made a lovely compost heap for my grass snake. On the front lawn, the cowslips were emerging. I spent some time in the morning in my dressing gown, counting them and scaring my neighbour. In the back garden on the 1st of May, the hawthorn was in bloom. And yesterday, I showed you all my unusual shaped pond. Thank you so much for all the lovely comments you've written under the blog. It's great to know that you've been enjoying it. I've had some lovely comments and some odd comments too. And of course, in doing the diary, we've started the back garden bird race. It's been amazing to think of all these people out there joining in, watching birds each weekend. Whether you're on a fire escape in Hove or looking down over the garden hedge onto the pet levels. It's been wonderful to think that even though I've been locked down in my own house for seven weeks, I haven't really been alone. So thank you for getting through this with me. If you're not a member of Sussex Wildlife Trust, then please consider joining us. We'd love to have you on board. You can join online. And that was the first 50 days of the Corona Wildlife Diary. I'll keep on doing it until uh, we're told to stop. And uh, in 50 days time, on June the 25th, we'll have another recap. Thank you for listening.